And then the government is continuing to present evidence in the case. You saw, well, you know what the evidence field uh, consisted of. And again, we're just waiting on the opportunity for the government to rest. We have a case to put on. And uh, we always felt, and we still feel, that when all the evidence is in in the case, that the man will be found innocent. What are your thoughts on some of the documents, the bank documents, that they, uh, the government presented, the $30,000 deposit, the $29,000 tax payment, those sorts of things uh, that were presented today? What are your thoughts on those? Those documents were corroboration and documentation of testimony that was given earlier in the trial. Um, and so again, this information was provided to us early in the case, and so we were not surprised by any of the documentation that we received. When the defense brought up the Corvair uh, that Norm Davis bought, uh, did y'all know that that had been given to the mayor by uh, John Catapotis? We knew that that was the allegation, and again, this was information that had been provided to us in discovery in the case. Is that is that in fact what happened, or did he pay for that? I don't know what happened with respect to the car, because I didn't represent the mayor at that time. Okay. Um, but I do know that the mayor sold the car to Norm Davis, because that what Mr. that's what Mr. Davis testified about today. Why, but I, why bring up the poor mayor at all? I don't know the details of the Corvair. Um, as I said, I wasn't representing the mayor at that time, and, and y'all have to ask Mike why he brought it up on call. Did you talk about the watch that Mr. Cooper bought? That was sort of an interesting relationship that they had at some time. Now, now rivals can you sort of talk about that? <laughs> you know, I'm going to hesitate to comment on the details of a person who's neither a witness nor a party to the case, and I'll let you guys spend that however you seem appropriate. Uh, four more witnesses they're saying to call. They'll call tomorrow. How do you prepare for that? Let, let me say about the Cooper thing, though, there's no testimony on the record that that is the same Patrick Cooper that ran for mayor if you, if you were sitting in the courtroom. Are you saying it's not? I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that you guys should fairly reflect what the evidence showed. Go ahead. I said four more witnesses tomorrow they're expecting to call. How do you prepare for tomorrow? Well, we prepare as we always have. We've been preparing for this case. We have been waiting for the opportunity to, you know, to, to try the mayor's case in a courtroom as opposed to in the media. Um, and so we're looking forward to the conclusion of the government's case. We're looking forward to putting our case on and the, having an opportunity to argue this case to the trial and walking the mayor out as an innocent man. So you will call witnesses? We had always intended to call witnesses. We gave a list of witnesses at the beginning of the trial. Does okay. that include Mayor Langford? Um, as we previously said, it is the defendant's decision because he has a constitutional right to determine whether or not to testify to remain silent, and he hasn't made that decision yet. Can you give, give us an indication of what witness you're having trouble perhaps in meeting? You know, we don't we don't intend to say that we're having trouble subpoenaing the witness. What happens is that you would always prefer to have witnesses come in willingly. You have a lot of people that have professional lives. Folks are not sitting around waiting on us to call them as witnesses in this case. And so if you contact them and they agree to come, then certainly we would prefer to do that. Sometimes people have employers. It requires them to be subpoenaed. Sometimes people have other obligations. It requires a subpoena. But we will use subpoena power if necessary to get an essential witness in court. Does that Office include... Examination, can I ask you, is it your position that the Ethics Commission doesn't have purview over these individual loans? Is that the defense you guys intend to present? Is that these weren't disclosed because in, it is your belief the statute doesn't provide them the opportunity to cover that? I don't... I don't think it's our position that the statute doesn't cover that disclosure. I think the purpose of cross-examination, again, is not the same as direct exam. It is not intended to present evidence. It is intended to provide a probing search into the accuracy and completeness of evidence that is presented by the government. But what you guys, what you got to remember is that this is the government's case. We're not obligated to put on any evidence. We're not obligated to put on any witnesses. But when the government put witnesses on, it is our obligation as his lawyers to make sure that they're being accurate, truthful, and complete. That's what I do when I cross-examine witnesses. Friday, you said you felt cautiously optimistic. Do you feel the same today? I do. You always have to be cautious when it's the United States versus you, because the United States government has substantial resources, as I think you saw. They have the well, they have substantial resources. And, and clearly, when you're an individual of the mayor's stature and your whole life is being brought to public trial, then you're always concerned about what that means. Uh, cautiously optimistic, even when you feel that you're innocent, you still have to go through the trial. Glenn, and why do you think the prosecution spent so much time talking about the mayor's personal finances? You have to ask them that. I do believe that part of the prosecution's case is that if an individual is alleged to have received bribes, then the money has to go somewhere. 
but again, I'm not trying to explain the government's presentation of evidence. That's something that you should probably ask them. Did Mrs. Langford know about that Compass Bank account? I can't tell you what Ms. Langford knew. Anything else? Glenn, you, Glenn you have, you've been pretty, I guess everybody's been pretty tight left. I thought there was a gag order in place. Has that been lifted or what's, what's changed? The, the court and, and the parties are concerned that the case not be tried in the media. And so there are restrictions which we feel are reasonable as to what can be said to avoid unfairly prejudicing either the government or Mr. Langford. But there are things that we can say, and that is why when you see sometimes I'm speaking very cautiously and carefully in response to your questions, because I want to try to be responsive to the media, but I also obviously want to be responsive and adhere to Judge Kugler's orders, because he has a little bit more sanction over me than y'all do. With that in mind, what is your response to the... Uh...